evening campers it's me kieran and as part of the book a boy book club if you want to join links down below we read nadifa mohammed the fortune men nadifa mohammed is a british somali writer but has set her story in what are you ready for it are you ready for it because i've been excited wales way cardiff bay tiger bay in a place that i used to live around the corner of and where is driving distance for me all of like 20 minutes let's not waste time in this little stuffy box room come on let's go i think it's like to start this view at the senate which is the welsh equivalent to the houses of parliament this book deals with Mohammed Matan and deals with one of the biggest injustices of the british uk system as wales has not got devolved powers in law, it's still part of our history as well. It's not really worth thinking if Wales had a different system, would anything be different? I don't think it's worth thinking that at all. All of this is where the story is set. Tiger Bay though, nowadays if you come to the bay you're probably going to be dealing with Mermaid Key and some pockets, most commonly this is called Boot Town and there's some pockets that still hold on to Tiger Bay and if you think of Tiger Bay these days you're not really thinking of Matar you're dealing with Dame Shirley Bassey who hailed from here a similar time but why aren't we talking about Matan? why aren't we talking about him this book starts off the fortune bed with the king dying the king is dead long live the queen and it's going to be another death just up this road and when I say up the road i i literally mean up the road that's cardiff center there this is cardiff bay and butte town one of the reasons why people love wales is not because the horizons sing but because of how small how compact it is you could really walk around cardiff city center and make your way down to the bay in like easily under an hour and a half quite easily and we're gonna make the walk now we're going to walk the way Matan came back from a cinema and how his life changed pretty much there and then. Before we talk about the crime and the injustice of the British system during the 1950s, well, who is Matan? Matan is a Somali sailor who has come to Cardiff, he's settled down his roots and like some and he falls in love with Laura, a Welsh woman and has a family. However, not all is plain sailing because they're not together. During the time that's enough to raise some questions in and of itself. But Mohammed, as she's writing Matan, isn't sugarcoated anything. He's a petty thief, he is a proud gambler and he's drinking most nights. There's something about his presence that doesn't give people a feeling of ease and his name is The Shadow. He's someone who lurks. He doesn't make, fe he doesn't make people feel, he doesn't make people feel at ease. In fact, his nickname's The Shadow. But you know who else feels uneasy? Matan, he carries a knife around with him and everything is set up for the reader in Hamid's book that you think, I don't know if I trust this man. Like, if he was to do something unjust, would I believe him? And just up this road here is when everything falls into place. 103 Butte Street. That's where it happens. That's where the crime happens. Violet Falaki is a shopkeeper of 203 Butte Street and someone breaks in, slits her throat and lets the blood pool around her and leaves. And who, who is it? Well, everyone's pointed fingers at Matan. The police arrive to where he's staying and says, that, well, someone's done it with a razor blade. Matan has a razor blade on him. It's clean mind and he'll make a point later on within the book that, well, if he was to slit the throat of a woman, why wouldn't it be covered in blood? And what we'll see within Muhammad's story is that people are testifying, people are saying that it's Matan, and there's really little to no evidence whatsoever that places him there. 
he's adamant that he was at the cinema, which would have been at the top of the road, that he's gonna make his way back down to Tiger Bay. But it's raining in the evening. No one's out watching the streets. Everyone says the baton was there. Around Butte Street and still today, there's a large Somali community. So why is Matan walking in the other direction? Well, he's, he's not liked by many people. He has digs down the road with some other immigrants. Really, this story is about immigrants. It's not really about Welsh people. Welsh people do come into the mix, but we're focused on the immigrant experience of living in a place like Cardiff Bay. You can see quite quickly we're back to where we are. Cardiff is a really small place. I digress. Who was murdered? Violet Blackie is a Jewish woman, but we don't spend much time with the family. We do, not really any significant time. But what I would say about Bahamut's novel is that we do change perspectives, but I would solely want this to be in Matan's point of view as he's trying to figure out what's going on and really he is trying to figure out what's going on he trusts in the british system he believes in democracy so if he says well i wasn't there i'm telling the truth well why wouldn't people agree with him why wouldn't people believe that he was there yeah okay they might not like him but would they wouldn't they want to tell the truth and towards the latter part of this novel, we see that Matan is slowly to realise the truth. And that he's going to die. He doesn't know it yet, but he's going to be the last hanged man in Britain. And this injustice, this case, is one of the most pivotal in UK history. It was one of the reasons why we don't hang people. The reason why we don't have a death sentence anymore is because of this Crime. I find it really strange that it took all of 15 minutes to go back to where we started, people. And Mohammed's novel loses that sense of scope. Cardiff feels huge, especially futile, but it's really not. It's really difficult to explain how close everything is to Cardiff. You might have noticed that statue. That's where we began our walk. It's taken me all of 15 minutes and I'm, I'm back to where I've started by the Senev. Mohammed's novel feels vast. It feels as vast as the ocean that brought the sailors on. It doesn't feel claustrophobic at times. And Matan doesn't seem to understand that everyone is looking at him. Everyone is gossiping, has hearsay. I think that's the real shame about Mohammed's novel is that we don't get this sense of Cardiff. I haven't felt that. Mohammed's novel has lost an essence of Cardiff and the allure of it. Now, she's not a Welsh author, and I don't doubt that she spent some time down in Butte Town. But it feels as though she's just pointed out the obvious, such as the Norwegian church over there. She mentions the boats that will come in, the docks. Now, she doesn't mention this building because this won't be here, the Welsh government won't be here until the 1990s. But let me show you something else that doesn't come up for a few years, but I think it's poignant. Oh, people still come to Yanto's shrine. Hi, welcome back. Yes, this video has taken a while to make, predominantly because I'm lazy, or is it because I now have to explain Yanto from Torchwood, and it kind of fits into time travel. We'll say that because it makes it sound a bit more professional. Yando is nothing special. He's a man. In fact, he's a human. Now, Torchwood is a Doctor Who spin-off, and Torchwood you can do similar to Tom Mavolo Riddle, where rather than making I Am Lord Voldemort, you'll create Doctor Who. I should also mention that the Doctor Who experience is all of a five-minute walk from the Senev. Please note this is really in a nutshell, but Yanto wants to be part of Torchwood, which is run by predominantly aliens and other beings. Through some shenanigans, Yanto becomes part of Torchwood and also becomes the lover of our main character, Jack, who will feature in many Doctor Who episodes to come. Again, on paper, there's nothing really special about Yanto, but people were drawn to him. They were drawn to his story. People still leave 
flowers and cards at Yanto's shrine in Cardiff Bay. People are naturally drawn to stories and people get emotional responses from fiction. And maybe there's something in the reason why Mohammed didn't write Mahmoud's biography. Maybe there's a reason she fictionalised some of this. Maybe that raises a question, do we care more about the story than the actual person? Maybe that's why we need stories. Maybe this is why Mohammed had to write Matan's story. Because people feel attached to them. And with all the boats that docked within Cardiff Bay, who knows what stories they're going to bring. Maybe someone just needs to write it down. Wouldn't that be a lovely sentiment to edit on? But we're going to come like, exactly where I started this video. And this is based on truth, apart from one person, which is Lily Volpert. Who's Lily Volpert, you might doubt? Well, that's the actual person who got murdered, and I have no real understanding to why Mohammed changed the name from Lily Volpert to Violet Vallaki. Why have we obscured the victim in all of this. I'm just really confused by that point. Everyone else is based on real people. Even the doctor who Matan meets Mohammed has said that she read the medical records that she got from Cardiff prison. Why are we changing the person who was murdered? I'm not entirely sure. There might be a very good reason. Maybe the family said they didn't want to, but I have a few other feelings, but let's go back home to discuss those. Hi, I know we've been here for the Yanto section. Like, just just pretend just pretend that it's the first time hi we're back in my room but Hamid's novel really brings an essence to cardiff but really i think she falls short of whoever what she lacks in that area we really do see towards the latter part of this novel a real essence of what it is to be in a system that is just out to get you we see this boisterous rude, aggressive character just become a shell of a man. Someone who knows that he is eventually going to die and it doesn't really it doesn't really matter what happened. He's going to be convicted and he will see the noose. One thing I would like to comment on is Mohammed's use of form and structure within this novel. It's not just a novel from the get-go. One of my favourite sections is the courtroom scene, this just staccato question answer that really leaves all emotions aside. It's solely based on the facts, but you can see that the facts begin to falter. You can see that people are holding on to straws. And I would say from that moment on is the better part of this story, as we focus more on Mahmood. And I wish we spent more time with Mahmood. All in all, I would recommend The Fortune Men, and this gets a very steady 7 out of 10.